All right, out here in the shop today. It's been raining here in Missouri. <clears throat> really nice outside. Um, so it's been a while since I made a video, and I think the last time I made a video, I was cleaning the frame off. And I'm sorry I haven't made one in a while for those of you who watch. Um, as you can tell, the frame's painted. I've just had a lot of stuff going on and trying to get out here and do this is one thing, but making videos and stuff, it's just kind of hard to fit it in between. But <clears throat> the frame is painted. I uh, power washed it once, scraped on it, wire wheeled on it a little bit, and... Uh, Power washed it again, wiped it down with wax and grease remover, and used um, magnet paints, satin black undercoating, rust preventative paint. So <clears throat> it turned out really good. Um, got the differential and everything painted. Uh, got that done, and then I started uh, ordering some stuff, ordering my brake lines. And as you can see, I got my new brake lines running from the back drums up through the frame. Got the new rubber hose there, running up all the way to the to the brake block up here. And I'm waiting to do the front until I get my disc brakes so I can do it all at once. So that's probably going to be the next thing, is the disc brakes. Um, <clears throat> and over here, as you guys know, I was working on um, my cab mounts. I thought they were okay, but ended up uh, they ended up being rusted out. Excuse me, I got something in my throat. <clears throat> Sorry, but the cab mounts on the inside ended up being rusted. So they these cab mounts will actually rust start from the inside and work their way outside. So I went ahead and ordered some off of uh, National Parts Depot and these are pretty close to the stock cab mounts but they worked pretty good um, I just made me a center line in the middle and marked the center of this new cab mount and got her tight and welded it up I'm getting a little better with my welding. Um, I'm just trying to make it as strong as I can and it ain't going nowhere. Uh, there is a little bit of a gap here. I'm gonna have to get my rubber mallet and kind of push this down a little more. Um, the factory one, this was touching, but I just could not get this down with this notch to touch the bottom of the cab. But this is a factory notch and the old cab mount too. But this is kind of bent down on the factory mount. So this is going to have to be pushed in somehow to touch this. And I'll have to put a couple spot welds in. Well, not a spot weld, but a, just a couple little pinch welds. <clears throat> or whatever they're called. Um... But yeah, the cab mounts will be replaced. I'll probably eventually redo these floor pans and do them butt welded. I just, that was the first thing I've welded. And uh, so I, I get what I got. But the cab mounts are replaced now. So whenever I want to replace these floor pans, I can do that anytime I want to. There is a little bitty rust hole right here I'm going to have to fix. And then I'm going to power wash this all up and I'm going to undercoat all this with that um, frame chassis saver. I don't like using rubber paint on any vehicle or, or a bed liner on anything because if you get to thinking about it, um, this rust preventative satin paint, it's not going to, you know, in 30 years it's still going to be there. And if you ever need to get it off, it's going to be really, it's going to be easier to get off than like bed liner or a uh, rubber, <clears throat> rubber coated paint. And me personally, I believe that rubber coated paint, like uh, undercoating, holds moisture. And I don't think it does any good, but that's just my opinion. So, 
we'll get that done and i'm not gonna these new mounts from national parts depot they don't they do not come with a hole and i think they do that because these these mounts are pretty well almost the same they're a little narrower on the <clears throat> on this part but I think they do that so you can kind of drill your holes once you get it on the truck. What I'm going to do is you'll never get these the exact same, I don't think, but I've got mine as close as they're going to get. I'm going to put the cab back on the frame with the new bushings and put the back two bolts in. And I'm not going to drill my holes until I have my front clip back on and my bed and everything's lined up straight. And I know everything's going to be straight and then I'll drill my hole for my new mounts. <laughs> And I'm also going to have to get the transmission. When I get the transmission in, I'm going to have to get that hole welded up there. So, sorry for my voice today. I'm a little stopped up. But yeah, it was a nice day to do all that um, as well. You guys know I've got my block machined. It's ready to assemble. And I've actually got a bunch of parts here. And I'm going to be working on this, hopefully this week or this weekend. I've got my new... Um, I've got my crankshaft back from the machine shop. It's ground down 20 on the mains and the rods, on the rod journals. And I've got my new <clears throat> Clevite Performance Series bearings. So the crank's ready to go in. Um, I've got my camshaft and I've got my timing chain. I need to get my oil pump. I've got my rings here. But the bottom end of that engine should be put together hopefully by the end of this week, this coming weekend. And then I can start um, worrying about the heads and the intake and my fuel injection system. But uh, that, that'll probably be a little while. We got plenty of other stuff to do. So I just kind of wanted to give you guys an update. It's moving along and right now uh, my main goal is to get the bottom of this cab buttoned up and get my new bushings on so I can get this back on the truck. And once this is back on the truck, it's just going to be moving forward that, that much faster. Um, we'll be reassembling. Um, I'm really glad I took the cab off. If you guys are to the point where, you know, it's just a couple bolts holding your cab on, um, me personally, it's better just to take it off and get your frame painted. And you can do that without taking it off but to me um, I just I assume to take it off as well I've got my cab on these uh, rollers from Harbor Freight these rollers are I think they're like ten dollars a piece they may be a little bit more than that but I just put some rollers underneath the back of it and they're kind of carpeted and you can just roll this cab around wherever you want so that's pretty cool. But I uh, I think these will work fine. Um, these actually come, these cab mounts actually come in like a, they just come in a raw metal finish and they got some kind of oil on them. So when you guys get them, what I did is I uh, degreased them with some wax and grease remover and I sanded them down kind of with just a scotch Bright pad and that worked really good and I used this Rust-Oleum Rust Perform Primer on the inside. I did two coats of that and I did two coats of black enamel. So I should never have any problems with rust in there. And I did that on the outside as well and then I'll coat all this with the chassis saver. So, and I'll do the same thing with the bed. Um, I'll underneath the bed. I'll coat with the chassis saver I'd say this bed this bed floor eventually one day is gonna have to come out anyway but I think I'm gonna just go ahead and paint underneath it as well lift the bed up and just do it the right way so yeah the next thing is just kind of getting this cab back on getting moving forward with the front brakes rebuilding the back drum brakes um, and getting that engine put together we still got a little bit to do I've still not figured out what I'm doing about a transmission yet but 
we'll get it figured out. Uh, I'm going to order new tie rods, all new front suspension parts. So it'll basically be a new truck when it's done, hopefully. So thank you guys for watching.